the uh, strikes in Nigeria have entered their fourth day. The momentum is rising now that we're told that workers in the oil and gas sector are expected to down tools, possibly on Sunday. That's going to have wider reverberations beyond Nigeria, even for global oil prices. We're joined now by Wale Fomorao at the video wall, just for a brief overview of how far Nigeria has come with this issue of fuel subsidies and the consequences. Right, thanks, Laura. So, well, we start in 1993, but of course, we know that fuel subsidies have been in Nigeria well before then. But in 1993, we saw w one of the first big moves to cut fuel subsidies in Nigeria, where the government moved the price of fuel from 70 cover per liter to 50 cover per liter. But what this graph will tell you clearly is that many attempts of the government to move the fuel, to remove the fuel subsidies have always been resisted, and whenever they're resisted. The price comes down just a little bit. We see that in 1994, the price went on to 5 naira per litre and then very um, quickly moved on to 11 naira per litre. What we saw, as, as, you, as you can see, as the prices go up to 25 naira per litre, it came down to 20. Then from 30 naira per litre, it came down to 22. Especially in 2000, we saw massive protests similar to what we're seeing in Lagos today. And we'll move on to the next, um, the next wall, uh, the next graph here. We see that... In 2002, the price was at 26 naira per litre and moved on to 34 naira per litre and very quickly moved on to 70 naira per litre. And for the first time in 2007, we actually saw some concessions by the government to bring down the price to 65 naira per litre. And then, of course, in January 1, 2012, we saw the big one. The government decided to remove the subsidies totally, moving the price of petrol to 141 naira per litre, as, the, as I mentioned, the, they removed the subsidies. So, where do we go from here? The government is not budging. Labor is not budging. What options do we have? We spoke to a Nigerian economist and CEO of financial derivatives, Bismarck Rewani, and he gave some suggestions on how this issue can be resolved. Take a look. There's a time when countries have to pay the price for change. This kind of structural change doesn't come easily. When you compare 158, well, let us say, uh, the total GDP is 49 trillion for a year. If you take one week or 10 days out of that, the productivity gains that will come because of the structural change that is going to be, uh, that we envisage, will more than compensate for these losses. If that's the price Nigeria has to pay to carry out this structural change, because the regulation of that industry is absolutely and totally imperative, we must do it, right? We must, uh, no country can continue to subsidize consumption because you are building a parasitic society, and that is what is happening. You've made your people addicted to a subsidy. And what happens to an addict, right? When an addict, if the pusher pulls, pulls off the cocaine, the addict is finished. And that's it. Are you going to go by withdrawing it, withdrawal syndromes, or are you going to go and put the addict into cold, cold turkey? That's, that's, where, that's where we are. First and foremost, we've got to get out of this bind. The president is in a cul-de-sac. That is, he's between a rock and a hard place. If he backs down, his, his credibility is on the mind permanently, and he will become an ineffective. In fact, he will become more than a lame duck, probably a dead duck. If he holds, his, if he holds the line, he will be considered intransigent. So how, what kind of resolution can actually create a win-win situation? The kind of resolution I see is that you defer the date of implementation, you announce much more practical and tangible uh, benefits and cutbacks on public expenditure, right? And you involve uh, different stakeholders in the process of how to uh, use the uh, savings that will emerge from this whole process. For example, if the president was to announce that all Nigerians who are admitted to top universities in the world will be on automatic scholarship, if it was to announce that the school fees in federal government colleges right, has been cut by 50% for the next five years, if it was to announce that all Nigerians in diaspora who have particular qualifications will, will, will be automatically brought back to Nigeria free of charge and pay their salary for at least one year so they don't, they're not stuck in unemployment, uh, if it was to announce that the health programs, uh, pediatrics and um, things like this are now going to be funded fully by and put it put an independent team to manage this process including the stakeholders right then people 
the urban mass transit, if it was to announce 10 road contracts, i.e. Kano to Abuja, Abuja to Port Harcourt, Wari to Calabar, Benin to Shagam, Lagos all the way to Shagam, Lagos to Baden, and here it is, Julius Berger, Strabag, and all of that. If he, make, if he makes those announcements today, everybody is going to be quite pleased. At the same time, he defers the takeoff of this project right, to another two or three months. Right? He enters into arrangements with Chiyoda, Mobile, Exxon, uh, Exxon Mobil, uh, Chevron, and all of that to build. The federal government will put enough enhancements, money behind them, to support it and guarantee whatever losses they have. Meanwhile, these guys will come in and immediately commence the building of brand new modern refineries, four or five across the country, which make us export led and all that. If those kind of practical announcements were made, rather than setting up committees and all of that, this, the people will buy that. The problem now is that you've got to resolve this issue or else things will deteriorate. The, requ the, the request of the people will go from just a price of petroleum to an, you know, uh, a call for the removal or a regime change. And then when, when you try to clamp down on them for treasonable offenses, then they will say that um, the world, the entire world will say that you are killing your own people and the NATO and other people come and protect them. And that's the beginning of a calamity. That's the beginning of a banana republic. Uh, I don't think this is something that we So uh, the federal government of Nigeria is fully aware of the risks of doing nothing or allowing things to drop.